G'day guys, Mark from TAT, the Automotive Technician. In this month's magazine, what's that? Uh, October to November 2025, Jeff Smith goes into the intricacies of the cooling system. Over the years, we've seen water pumps progress from basic ones driven by a pulley with, uh, you know, leakage, etc., bearing noise, through to ones with those stupid plastic impellers that break off, cause overheating to the engine, electric water pumps, and now we have thermal management systems. All of these have their own characteristic strategies. How can we test these water pumps? Because they're hidden deep inside and we don't have x-ray vision. Not necessarily for our thermal management systems, but for the basic water pump, here is a simple test that we can use to see if it is flowing properly, not just looking for a leak or a bearing noise, to see if it's actually flowing properly and that stupid impeller hasn't broken off the back. I have a VT Commodore here that I'll be able to show you how to do this test. Now what we need to do is isolate the heater hoses. Uh, as you can see here, we have one on the top coming from the engine and a return one as well. And if we cruise over here, we'll be able to see the heater tap and the two hoses going onto it as well. We've got an upper one and a lower one down there. Now one of these hoses will have uh, coolant coming from the engine going back that away and the other one will be returning back to the engine. We need to find one of the ones, um, well hopefully this one here will be the one coming from the engine going that way. What we're going to do is hook up a pressure gauge on it and see what sort of pressure we have with the water pump rotating or the engine running. So how do I determine which direction the flow is going? Is it coming from the engine here going off to the heater core or is this the return line going back to the engine? The only real way to figure it out is to start the engine and have a look at which way it comes out. Is it going to come here or here? And there we go. So here is our pressure going off to the heater core. So this is the one that we need to hook up to. We need to block this one off and hook up to this one. So now that I've determined that it was the top pipe pushing the flow out towards the heater core, that's where I've got my big pressure gauge on. And this fella here, that's the one that was on there, I've just got it blanked off with a bolt, no big deal. The important thing is that we have our pressure gauge hooked up to the flow side of things. Before we do any testing, we really need to top up the radiator once again. I'm just gonna use some water here, it really doesn't matter because I've got to flush the cooling system anyway. So we'll top that up and we'll also leave the radiator cap off. We're now gonna start and run the engine somewhere between 2000 and 2500 RPM and have a look at the pressure that's produced. At about 2000 to 2500 RPM, we should be getting roughly 70 kPa to 100 kPa. Pretty good. She's a bit hairy, that engine, poor thing. That 70 to 100 kPa is roughly about 10 to 15 psi, which is right on the money. So according to this test, this particular water pump is flowing the coolant correctly. That's a simple test to see if we're getting the flow rate possible from the water pump. We can rule that out as an overheating issue. Our regular magazine is an absolute fantastic source of technical information, whether we view it in digital format or have it on the Smoko Room table in paper base. So make sure you read it and glean all the technical information that's inside. I hope this basic water pump testing is helpful to you and the other technicians in the workshop. Make sure you read your magazine and catch up with repair solutions on our site as well. So until next time we catch up on another video guys, this is Mark from TAT signing off, I'll catch you later.